Handing over now to Monique Clausen, the pretty Monique Clausen, who comes from Cantal. Take it away, Monique. Hi, thanks, Timmy. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm so grateful that you took this hour of your time to share with us today. <clears throat> I'm going to be chatting about Radio Insights specifically. Um, we got a lot of questions in, in the last couple of months asking us specifically if you know, radio and audio is still relevant. So you will see, um, I have collated all the wonderful learnings from the South African databases across Kantar. And yeah, we, we are going to be focusing on radio specifically in order to answer that question. Um, however, I, I want to caveat at the beginning of the presentation that we are very media neutral. So you'll see lots of slides with lots of different media. If you want um, specific learnings to any touch points, please do drop a, a question in the Q&A box or drop a mail and we'll be more than happy um, to send you some learnings on lots of different touch points. But for this morning, like I said, we're really focusing on, on radio and digital audio. So I can find my little button. Radio. There we go, I found it. Um, so we're going to be focusing on four key areas. The first is really what's happening to radio listenership in South Africa during COVID. And um, so Kantar has a barometer. We've tracked every single week, consumers general habits, feelings, emotions, um, from the middle of March right through to the middle of August. And I'm gonna be sharing some of the media specific insights with you. Then, obviously, we're going to answer the key question, how relevant is radio in a media plan? We're also going to be touching on audio as a whole. So moving away from thinking about radio versus digital audio to really start unpacking the value of audio planning as, as a whole. And then finally, we're going to end off with um, some creative and an importance of creative within ROI. So anyone who's here from a media agency or strat background, um, everything up until the little purple bar will show the power of radio in a media plan. But the little purple bar brings it all together to say it's really important that we also get our radio creative rights. So what has been listening to, uh, what has been happening to radio listenership during COVID? Um, before we get into unpacking radio, we, I wanted to take a step back. So again, this comes from the Cantar Barometer. Um, and the question here is, are you spending more or less time engaging um, with different media touch points? And in the start of March, just before lockdown hits us, we can see that consumers were already saying, oh, you know, they are spending more time. So this isn't necessarily higher reach. It's simply higher frequency. Right up until the end of August, we see that that time of, of eyeballs and share of voice is actually continuing to grow. And that, that's massive. And that, that trend has continued regardless of how the lockdown levels have come down in South Africa. Now, when we unpack what was happening at the peak um, of our COVID period in SA, across different media touch points, we can see that it really came as no surprise that consumers were spending a lot, of, a lot more time on at-home media. So we can see internet surfing, social networks, messaging, email, everything just going up. And this is where consumers say, yep, I'm definitely spending more time um, on with these particular touch points. Then, of course, we even saw increases on TV, which is no surprise. And um, what we also saw was that in that claim increased consumption within radio, as well as radio streaming and podcasts. And again, um, for anyone in the media industry, we do know this, consumers were spending less time on print, so newspapers and, and magazines. So this is what was happening at the peak. So this was May. Now, one of the interesting things is we wanted to know how sticky these trends are. So are consumers going to continue this massive increase of consumption across all these different touch points? Or is there something that's maybe going to change habits or stick with them? So what we've done is we've looked at 
our fir at, at the peak versus the end of August. And here, what you're looking at in terms of the blue bars is you can see how consumers' consumption patterns are changing back, perhaps to where they were prior. And here you see the resurgence of print. So consumers saying, yes, they're starting to spend time with newspapers and magazines. Um, and, and the gray bars, before I focus on audio, all the things that we saw those massive spikes in, in terms of digital and TV, we're actually seeing those um, trending backwards, um, more or less in line with where they probably were before the pandemic hit us. The one thing that has remained sticky is, interestingly, radio. So radio, we, we continue to see growth with within May and August, and we've actually continued to see some growth as we trend um, period on period. And the other thing um, that we also see is, is sticky is the online streaming of radio. So whilst undoubtedly um, consumers' consumption patterns of radio have changed in terms of perhaps they're not listening to draft time at 6 a.m. anymore, maybe that's new from 7 to 10, um, whilst we don't have that level of detail, we certainly do know that media habits have changed during COVID and that radio wasn't necessarily massively impacted. So what does this mean um, for us in terms of radio? When I started in um, media at Kantar almost two decades ago, um, Google was still in its infancy and there was no such thing as social media, right? So social media didn't exist on a plan. Um, digital was maybe some really neon banners um, and that, that was probably it. So with, it, with the new reemergence or the surgence of all these different um, types of touch points in planning, the question is, is radio still sexy? Like, does it actually deliver anything? Should we not be moving all our money to, you know, online streaming and podcasts and, and targeting millennials and where the youth are? Aren't there better ways to reach target audiences? So again, what we've done is we've looked at our South African cross-media database um, across all the touch points. Um, within 2019 and 2020, just the campaigns that we've covered, and um, it covers off roughly around 2.4 billion rand worth of campaign spend. And here I've just pulled out three particular touch points. I've looked at the average reach and frequency which each touch point delivers um, in a campaign. And you can see that radio still continues um, to be the king of reach in South Africa. And what is interesting is that this is the same trend for TV that we see globally, even in very, very developed markets where digital spend is overtaking TV, we still see that TV reach um, is the highest in most markets. This includes the US, the UK and Australia. Now, before I get all the digital people up in arms going, Mon, digital is not a channel. I know this. Um, however, we've just aggregated all the digital channels we have, because remember, we really want to talk about um, digital and digital audio. And here you can see that the reach for, for digital, if we aggregate that is around 22%, obviously it's higher in some platforms and lower in others. The same as TV would be perhaps higher reach in terrestrial and lower in others. Um, but the key thing about radio, what radio delivers, which no other touch point does, is this phenomenal level of frequency. So time and time again, when radio is included in, in a media plan, we see massive amounts of frequency. Now, whilst that could be expected and you go, yes, we all know that, Mon, um, I think what's really key here is what that means for a media strategist and a brand. And it's all about the ability to create a connection with your consumer and tell wonderful stories. And what we see in a lot of the campaigns that we track is that the real value of radio and delivering that frequency and campaign frequency and supplementing message frequency that isn't actually utilized to its full degree. So it's just a reminder that radio in a plan delivers wonderful frequency. And of course, it's, um, we've compared radio to TV here because TV is the highest reach medium um, that, we, that we track in all our campaigns in South Africa. 
<clears throat> what is interesting from radio, though, is that it delivers unique audience above and beyond TV. So back in 2015, that unique audience that radio on average was delivering was just around 2%. Fast forward five years and we're seeing that radio offers a very unique audience outside of TV, almost 10%. Um, and that again just goes to show perhaps the trend of changing uh, media consumption behaviors. So the proliferation of more TV channels in terms of the paid environment, as well as more online content sourcing um, platforms. So radio has continued to actually grow that, that unique audience. Now, the question to all media planners is, how do you use that? Well, if you know that you're going to get high reach from TV and you're, going to, and you're going to get a unique audience from radio, that's really how you should be thinking about planning. It's not an either or. It's not about where do I put my money? Is it on TV or radio? And um, it should really be the marriage of both. The other thing, so as Katerina was mentioning up front, she showed you some results about the cost effectiveness of, of including radio in a plan. And yeah, we, we again, this is a South African example. I um, just converted to US dollars. We show this to a lot of international um, brands and clients that we work with. And here you can see the cost per 1% reach on TV alone is much higher than if you add radio into that mix. And the reason for that is because you are getting um, a very unique audience on radio. And this really is a trend that we see across um, whether you still plan by the old LSM, SEM, household income, personal income. It's a trend that we see really happening across the board. If you choose the right radio stations and the right programming, we do see that it does deliver that unique audience and therefore brings your overall um, cost of media planning down. So, Radio is still really relevant, but there's two things there that I want. Um, I think there's two key insights that are uh, that I really want to to end that section off with, and the one is the high level of frequency that radio delivers, as well as the incremental reach to TV. So it it's not just about the value of that, but it's really, <coughs> excuse me, the value of what that means for media planning. How are you using that frequency and how are you using that incremental reach to really land your campaign messages? And what is very exciting for us is that in the last year or so, digital audio has, has taken off in terms of media planning and being included in media plans. And so here I'm going to share some South African examples with you that shows the value of all that free digital inventory that you are getting from radio broadcasters and the value of what that actually is. So here you've got four categories and these are case studies that I've just taken from four categories. So the one is retail, auto, finance, and then FMCG. And the little green bar in the middle tells you the, the duplicated reach between everyone who is hearing your ad on radio, as well as, as seeing it within the digital radio uh, or hearing it within those digital radio platforms. So whilst um, media planners are really excited because it's um, often you know, value added inventory, again, there's huge value in that not only because it gives you that duplicated reach so that you have a second opportunity to drive home your campaign messaging, but look at the unique reach that we're getting from digital. So the unique reach is people that are tuning in, but not listening to that linear um, broadcast necessarily. So again, if you add digital audio and radio, we need to really start thinking about it as an ecosystem, pretty much like we thought about TV um, you know, versus YouTube or Facebook a few years ago. In the last four to five years, we're really starting to see um, the industry think about video rather than platforms. And 
I would urge everyone to start thinking about audio rather than radio, digital, et cetera. Um, because that is where the value lies and the beauty of audio as a medium lies. So the last section um, that I wanted to end off with was the ROI of radio. Oh, exciting. Does it drive sales? Does it drive brand? So Katerina showed you some really nice examples from Europe. Um, and we want to show you some really nice examples um, from our Kantar databases here. So before I start the section, um, I want to say that radio in a media strategy or plan has its place and it really does have value. However, the biggest downfall of radio being able to make an impact is the creative. So this is taken from our creative database. And here you can see the light purple bars and the blue bar looks at the impact of each creative touch point. So we can see that when a digital creative is great, the impact is huge. When a TV creative is great, the impact is also very large. But in general, radio creatives, the volume of great radio creators is significantly um, less impactful than TV or digital. And in general, if you have a very poor creative, um, it's not going to make an impact. Um, and there you can see the weakest creatives really don't make an impact. They don't deliver at 100% index. And that 100% index is for every round you spend, that's the impact that you get back. <clears throat> we see that weak radio way under delivers. So whilst we spend a lot, we spend a lot of time um, on, on our media strats and we spend a lot of time on our TV advertising, we really need to think about our radio advertising specifically. And we know that not all radio advertising is the same. So this is a very busy chart. Um, but if you're in media, you will be used to numbers. So if you um, stay with me for a second, I will explain it to you. So we've got all the categories that, that we um, track in terms of cross media. So auto, finance, food and drink, personal care, retailers, technology, and communication. Then we've got the impact on brand uh, for radio specifically. So this looks at the radio impact on brand across three different metrics. Does, it, does the radio positively impact brand awareness, brand associations, and that's really your imagery and your KPIs, and then motivation, depending on the category, could be something like claimed trial, or it could be consideration or intention to switch accounts, for example, in finance. So here, the, the average um, would be 100 because it's indexed. So anything under 100 tells you that, um, you know, radio is not really impacting that particular metric. And anything over 100 goes, yeah, we're doing really well. Now, the reason that I am showing you this chart is simply because we would think that radio creatives are adapted to every single media plan. So if you want to drive particular traffic to an online store, you want to drive search, um, you know, that radio is utilized in, this way, in that particular way. So the creative should be optimized for every single um, campaign. However, the database shows us that radio creatives perhaps tend to be used in a very similar way. So it tends to be used to drive awareness um, within the FMCG space and maybe brand associations and um, within telco and, and telecommunication and really over indexes on motivation for auto. And if you think about the type of content that is in radio creatives, that's really not surprising um, because of the messaging that we see within radio. So the other reason that I'm showing this chart is because radio can actually work. It can work across every single dimension, whether you want to drive awareness or brand associations or motivation, radio can work. But again, it comes back to the first chart that I showed in the space around the importance of good creative. Without great creative, um, the media plan can only do so much. The creative actually has to bring home the campaign 
messages. And this is for campaigns. So here is an example of where Radio Creative was very impactful. Uh, it's a finance category example in South Africa. And you can see that this particular brand already had high levels of awareness. But you can see that that great creative had huge impact on brand favorability, consideration, and likelihood to do business with in the future. So again, the power of good creative um, really can over index on everything. Um, and that's why we, we need to spend some time um, nailing that radio creative. The last thing I wanted to end off with was um, something quite uh, perhaps surprising and controversial, um, which I think we need to remember as, as marketers in the industry. So this comes from our marketing mix, uh, market, uh, mix marketing model database. So it's a, a database of econometric modeling based on sales across a whole bunch of brands. And what we see is that ladies and gentlemen, paid for advertising only accounts for 13% of actual sales. Now everyone goes, what? No, that can't be right. But bearing in mind that there's a lot of other things that can impact a sale of a brand. So if we go through something like a telco, it could be the quality of my signal, um, my download speed of my data. It could be my interaction with the call center. If I go to an FMCG brand, it could be price, distribution, availability. It could be the quality of the product that I bought and it didn't taste as great as I thought it was going to taste. So all those other touch points, all those other bits and pieces where um, consumers can interact with your brand, that actually accounts for 87% um, of brand sales on average. Now, obviously, for some categories, this is higher, some categories are lower, um, but this is an average. I can't tell you, how, however, that there is no category where sales um, is, or 90% of sales is driven by paid for advertising. The highest that we've seen is around 25% of sales are driven by paid for advertising. So all we can do as marketers is no matter what touch points we use is try and optimize and maximize that 13% bucket. So again, when we break down um, the individual channels of what makes up um, that 13%, that we can see two bars. We can see the black bar, which is the direct contribution of that sale. And then the purple bar, which actually says, okay, let's look at the amount of money we invested in that channel versus the value of that impact on that sale. So when you just look at direct impact, you can see TV sale number one, Digital and radio are close second and third. So again, think about the, the value of audio planning, if we can marry the two. Um, but what is very interesting is that if, when we look at the ROI from a RAND point of view, so we say we spent so much money on this particular touch point in a media plan, what was the ROI from that? That's where you can see the value of digital and radio um, actually outperform in terms of TV. So the value when we look at how much we invest in the different touch points, you can see that almost everything um, works slightly harder than TV. So there's, there's two ways of looking at it, but either way that you want to look at it, you can see that digital and radio works incredibly um, well in driving sales. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to touch on or leave you with is that this is just the media plan. So we go, here's media planning. This is what we're doing. This is how much we're spending in a media plan. Um, however, if we look at the creative impact and we go, hmm, this media strategy has great creative, you can see that that little bar goes from 13% to 28%. So the impact on the brand becomes that much bigger when we take that creative and the brand into account. And there you can see <clears throat> the ROI from direct equity impact and the ROI from equity impact for radio is um, quite 
small. So that little black bar is, is very, very tiny. And the reason for that is because of what we saw in the upfront charts. On average, radio creative is not particularly impactful. So if we can make sure that our radio creative is great, um, we can actually help to optimize and deliver um, that 28%. So those are the four things that I want to leave you with. One, um, radio listening, in case, you know, I've been babbling for a while and you forgot that front shot. Uh, radio listening has been very resilient over lockdown, as has digital. Um, we see that radio offers unique reach to TV and is continuing to do so. It's also cost effective. We also see that digital audio offers unique reach um, and digital is more than just a value add. And then finally, the key thing obviously to take away is if I haven't, you know, um, I suppose answered the question of is radio still relevant? Yes, it is. And we need to make sure that our radio creative is also optimized. And so again, uh, thanks so much for your time and, and for listening. And of course, like I said at the beginning, um, you know, we have information on every single touch point. This is specifically to answer the question of, is radio still relevant? But if you want to know anything else, please drop me a line um, and I'll be happy to share with you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Monique.